Okay, thank you. Uh, uh, it was really interesting topic in here, uh, and two of the last presentators uh, uh, talked really relevant issues because, uh, for example, this open science has been one of the issues we have discussed a lot with the higher education institutions lately. We, it's one of the objects we are trying to enhance in, 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 an, in our higher education systems and higher education institutions, and we actually discussed quite, quite recently about this issue, among the other issues in our performance agreement negotiations, and I couldn't agree more than that, that, that open is not enough. It has, has to be also this kind of usable and reliable data, data when, when we are uh, ma making things available. But this is, uh, my presentation is about uh, our usage of this kind of different data in our funding model, core funding model of the, of the, of the uh, universities, universities in Finland. So a few principles first about our core funding model. Basically, our funding model operates in a way that uh, Parliament decides the overall amount, how much uh, of the funding is allocated to the universities in, in, uh, for the whole sector. And it's actually divided using by the ministries, Ministry of Education and Culture's funding model. Uh, core, our core funding model comprises somewhere around two-thirds of the university's funding in, on average. It of course varies a lot uh, between different universities. Some universities have more external funding and some universities have less, less external funding. But this is, the, this is the average amount of how much funding uh, is uh, allocated by, by our funding model. Of course there are many other, uh, many other funding sources for, for universities. Uh, namely, Academy of Finland, which is, I think, it's the biggest, biggest of these. Then there are Finnish funding ag agency for innovation, different foundation, of course. Uh, uh, higher education institutions do quite a lot of cooperation with companies, and of course there is different kind of inter inter international funding, like European Union funding, which, which is also part of the part of the whole structure. But I'm concentrating here on our co ministry's core funding model. Basic principle is that uh, most of the funding is based on uh, acute out outputs the universities have done and uh, all indicators are calculated using three years averages. So it's indicator based, based output based model and there's an example how it's basically calculated when we're using this. This is one of the important things to note in our funding model that we allocate funding to universities in a lump sum funding. So this means that uh, universities themselves decide how they use it internally. Our funding model doesn't anyway uh, tie universities, uh, their, their, their uses of the funding we allocate, allocate to them. So, uh, and it's in, uh, also important to note that the other funding sources are, the, are, are the, that kind of sources that give uh, universities this kind of competitive research funding like the Academy of Finland. Uh, our, our basic allocation model is a little bit different that, uh, because it, gives, it doesn't give money to different projects. It gives, give, gives this kind of lump sum funding for, for universities. So this is the basic principle what, what of our, uh, our funding model actually looks like. So basically uh, it's uh, allocated to, for, the, for the whole operations of the, of the university. Meaning that uh, we have taken account, uh, of course, the two main tasks, education and research. And then there's, there's this third, uh, third factor called other, uh, other, science policy, uh, other education and science policy considerations, which, which comprise cert certain factors in this model. Actually, this is the model that will come to effect at the beginning of the next year. It is not really hugely different from the pre previous model that was uh, allocated for this year, which came to effect 2015. Actually, there we a little bit increased the strategic f uh, development funding and then uh, as because we divide 100% of funding, it was education and research were both uh, lowered a little bit by 1% in that. So there's done this kind of shift, but the basic principle is actually quite similar. This kind of funding model has, has come to uh, use at the university core funding actually 2013, uh, but before that uh, our funding model was already performance based. It was a little bit uh, organized a little bit differently and there was uh, um, some, some elements that are not, uh, not anymore part of this model, like uh, 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 agreed targets at the, uh, at the negotiations, which were some funding was allocated by that. But the basic, uh, basic uh, items like, for example, master's degrees have been quite long time in the model. Uh, in the fin Finnish funding, funding, it was somewhere in the 90s when the first performance elements have begun, be begun part of that model.
So, but uh, I will briefly say a few words about the education side, which uh, of course comprises because part of that are master's degrees, bachelor's degrees. Degrees are quite natural output uh, factors to be measured in the model. Then there are different kind of internationalization session parts of the model, and then. Um, then there's the different kind of uh, study credits in open, open university and so on, uh, student feedback and also student mobility and employment which are taken part of that model. Uh, this strategic development at the below, I will go to the research it's a little bit later. So um, this strategic development is the part that is actually negotiated at the performance agreements negotiations and this part is uh, you could say the forward-looking part of the Finnish funding model. Uh, basically, it's agreed. It is based on on the strategy of the, uh, the university implementation of the strategy, and also, of course, we take into account the different kind of government program uh, development issues and so on. We, what, which kind of issues we want to want to develop uh, within the model. Then there is this field-specific uh, funding element, which includes some fields that are either infrastructure uh, sp uh, uh, heavy in that sense or are based more to uh, personalized teaching like for example the arts which really cannot be taken into account in especially the research part, part of the model. And then we have also, of course this kind of some national duties that are allocated by the model like, like uh, National Library of Finland which doesn't fit any, anywhere else in this model so they are taken, taken account as this kind of national, national duties in the, in, within the model. So, but uh, when we come to this research part, uh, we have a, a, we have few factors here, which, of course, there is also little little bit uh, discussion about whether something is fully a research element or not. Like, for example, the international teaching and research personnel, it's it, it's basically part of the both sides education and research because there is also teaching personnel within there. But uh, this is the part we. Uh, we, which is allocated on, on the base of research, and um, it should be um, noted in that uh, this, all this data is actually publicly available at the Vipunen database, uh, which which is also also actually in English today. Some of the indicators already there, so so you can look at the data which the universities universities have um, have within uh, have there and also the importance of the uh, d data reliability which is of course one of the key issues why these indicators were were selected to be part of this research funding it's actually in a kind of kind of way it limits the choice of the indicators we can use 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 in this because we must have data on all the for example from the all the fields of education we don't divide money to the different fields of education so it's basically everything is calculated within the university level level within this model so, and of course everything has to be in that sense transparent that uh, everybody can basically calculate and anticipate, their, uh, and anticipate their funding and it requires certain, certain simplicity uh, within, the, within the funding model. So, the basic principle actually when, when it comes to the PhD degrees, which is of course a quite natural part of the, of, of, of the funding, model, funding model for universities, it's 9% of the whole model and this means approximately 140 million euros divided between all the, all the universities when we calculate the funding. So uh, it's a number of PhDs degrees awarded to the accurate target which is basically quite simple, simple way of calculating it and this accurate target is agreed at the performance negotiations with its universities which is university and the Ministry, Ministry of Education. We ha last spring had uh, negotiations with the, with the universities, so these targets have been now agreed to the next, uh, next four years, beginning of 2017. We use four-year four year agreement periods, periods with, our, with our funding model. And basically, basic principle is actually quite simple. If uh, one university has about uh, 180 degrees and the whole sector's output is 1,800 degrees, that means that uh, the, that university would get 10% uh, out of this 140 million, provided if it's not, okay, not above the target. So this is the basic principle. These are not actually uh, detailed real figures, but it, this, this is to show the principle how, how this uh, operate this model. So, so actually, we did a small change within this this factor when uh, when the model was changed last time. Uh, we actually removed one factor there, which was uh, foreign PhD degrees, because uh, we saw that it actually would be useful uh, useful today to allocate the funding for PhDs. Uh, 
similarly to universities, uh, regardless of the uh, PhDs, uh, uh, regardless of the graduates' origins, actually. So, so there was there was a minor change within the model t during that, which which will take effect on the beginning of the next year. So um, the other factor in this is internal teaching and research personnel, which is a small factor within the model, but we have seen it's important that, uh, uh, that uh, it, it would give universities that this kind of incentives to uh, also, um, also for hiring and getting, getting stuff, uh, also best experts from abroad also. One of the issues in the Finnish higher education system compared to many, many countries have been quite many years that uh, uh, w w there is a clear need for more, the, more internationalization, which have actually improved quite a lot during the last, last years, but we still see it's important to have this kind of incentives also, also within our, within our uh, funding models. So, um, then uh, this, uh, we have the scientific publications within our model which is the largest, largest part of the research, research side of our funding model. 13% uh, which means approximately 210 million is of course the main indicators of the science that are university scientific activities which can be, can be this way measured, measured for all, all universities and for all fields. So, um, Basically, this is a main emphasis in within this part is actually for the referred scientific uh, uh, publications, which includes uh, articles, monographs, conference proceedings, uh, and is calculated actually today using uh, using uh, forum rating uh, um, uh, made by a Federation of Finnish Learned Societies. This means actually that this uh, this rating is. Uh, maintained and updated by university community. They have more than 20 dif different, uh, uh, different panels that um, are going through the different publication channels basically and this is based on the publication channel how, how it is allocated. So there is this kind of quality element within the, within the funding models when it's uh, regarding the publications. So we basically have the, here the three, three levels classifications, classifications within these uh, uh, levels. So one this kind of basic, two leading, and also three top uh, top publications. And uh, if I remember it correctly, it's somewhere about 20% of the publications can be on level two. And out of those, only uh, it, it might have been 25% uh, can be at the uh, at the top level publication. So it's limited how many of these kind of these kind of publications uh, can have in uh, within the different fields of uh, fields of science in in these. Uh, Publications ratings. So, and then there's also some ratings that are, that are not actually actually received level one rating, which are marked as zero. So they are also taken into account. And the basic principle is that the higher the rating, the greater is the coefficient when we calculate the publication in in, in the funding calculation. You can see the uh, see, see the basically the coefficients in here, the factors in within here. So. Uh, basically, this um, top-level publication would uh, would uh, give as much funding as the four level one one publications within the model. So basically, this is uh, the main idea of this is that we, of course, would like to have have this kind of uh, uh, emphasis on the most top-level publications also also, and they are they are rewarded within the within the Finnish uh, Finnish uh, universities funding model. Then we have this, uh, this is actually quite small, it's only coefficient is 0 0.1, but uh, we felt it is really important to have also this kind of non-referred articles like books and conference, uh, uh, non-referred non conference proceedings, uh, different kind of professional publications and publications intended for general publics to be included in, within this model. So this is, uh, this is also to in, uh, incentive for, for universities to uh, basically to publicate this kind of, um, uh, you could say societal impact uh, type, of, uh, type of publications also, and they are, they are included within this funding model. So, um, so then, um, the uh, last part of what we have within our funding model is this um, uh, are these competitive research funding part. This means actually that is based on the research and development funding that universities have obtained from competitive sources, and we this way we give incentives for universities also also within the funding model 
to get external funding from different sources. So it's also rewarded uh, with, within the funding model. And it's important to remember also, also within this that universities can of course use their funding, funding to whatever activities they like because it's awarded within the lump sum funding, funding through the universities. It's not meant for these projects which have uh, actually got the funding, funding from the outside sources. But uh, it uh, it's, uh, comprises two parts. Uh, one part is inter internationally competed research funding, which is 3% of this, which means that, that it's included competed EU funding. We do, do not include structural funds because they are targeted for certain areas, so, so it's not basically available within the similar level for all, all universities. And then there are some foreign funds and foundations which are calculated in these international organizations and also other international funding, or funding which are might be some some different organizations are uh, giving international funding funding so it's it's part of the model and then there is this other part which is natural nationally competed research funding and corporate funding uh, which is six percent out of uh, out of the funding model so this means all the academy of finland funding the guest funding and also within this part there are domestic and foreign companies it's actually sometimes a little bit difficult to uh, sh uh, make the division which is domestic and foreign companies, so they they are part of the same 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 source of, uh, within our within our model. So basically, this is uh, actually the research so side how how our funding funding is allocated within our funding model. So so actually, uh, I would be happy to answer any questions you should have one. So so thank you, Tommy. <laughs> okay, so any questions to Tommy? Yes, Ella. Yes. Hello, Ella Bingham from Aalto University. So, so did I understand correctly that the openness activities would be part of the strategic negotiation part and funded through that? Yeah, there is no that kind of specific element for the openness, openness factors. We actually discussed when we developed this model uh, quite a long time with, the, with when we're developing these scientific publications, but it's not, uh, of course, the, all the openness, open publications and so on are part of the, part of the other, but they, they are not uh, any, any special way incentives uh, through that. But uh, we discussed uh, about the openness at the negotiations and if uh, the universities, uh, or the, for the same matter, universities of applied sciences, uh, would have that kind of um, that kind of uh, initiatives and uh, uh, implementations of the strategy that might apply to strategic funding can be taken account of there. But it's not that something that would be taken account of within the every, any uh, all the universities. In it depends on the university's own strategy and then implementation of the strategy. Yeah, 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 right. Yeah. So I, I saw it in in our university's negotiations. So it doesn't mean that it is it is for everybody. So it's for us, but then it, it's case by case. It's, it's case by case because it depends on the actions the university is doing. It's so, so it's something that might be taken account in the, in, in the strategic part of the funding. I'm not sure whether this is working, actually. Is it? it is, okay. Uh, I'm Helena Larksen from the Social Science Data Archive in Finland. And um, I would like to ask whether you have been discussing adding uh, the open data sets to your calculations the same way as the research publications are? Uh, not that much about the open data sets. There are certain factors that are calculated. It's, so far it's articles and uh, this kind of conference proceedings and uh, different, um, for example, editorials and so on. So that wasn't really uh, uh, any detailed part of the, uh, of the discussion of the last working group. This was mainly about the open publications, not that much about the data sets. That's something that perhaps needs to be taken into account when we're next time to change the model. So, so it might be needed to discuss more. I mean, maybe just elaborate on these <laughs> national questions that were somehow to be expected. So, because um, this, this open 
data and open research, open science movement is now so high on the kind of strategic agenda that the EU and also nationally, I think uh, one might consider somehow in, in including some elements of this at, in the funding world because the universities, as you know, so they tend to do kind of the things that the ministry funds and so this would be a kind of a powerful carrot to kind of to attract the universities in this direction. I would, I would actually like to ask also you, I mean, okay, so if you want. I, I, yes. I, my comment on that, because uh, uh, it was actually, it's something that of course need to be discussed in mm. the future when, we, when it comes to the data sets and so on, mm. the openness. It's, it's, as I said in the beginning, it's, it has been one of the issues that we have mm. been talking quite a lot and uh, we want really to put forward the openness of open publication and so on. Uh, we discussed it a lot uh, with the publication, but the basic aim is actually that uh, most of the publication should be open. Uh, mm. uh, reg uh, on, only in the cases where there's some need Mm. For some specific need uh, for yeah. for um, to have it classified, for example, for some cooperation uh, cooperation with companies and so mm. so on, which might be the causes. So any other cases, they should be open. But also, uh, it's, it's important to remember that this funding model is not everything in that sense. For example, uh, Academy of Finland has included some elements. Uh, regarding the open, like, openness uh, uh, in, in their research funding, fund, funding uh, requirements, basically. So this is not the only way mm. and uh, not the only funding element mm. when, it, when it comes to mm. the enhancing the uh, mm. uh, openness, yeah. uh, openness yeah. in research yes. activities. Yeah. I just feel if you really want to push the university <laughs> to jump, so then. But I, I was actually curious, so people from the other Nordic countries, so do you know if there are, or are there elements of somehow promoting this open research in your national kind of uh, agencies? So I'm Yes, my name is uh, Henrise Kierkegaard. I come from the Danish Agency for Science, Technology and Innovation, part of the Danish Ministry for Science and Higher Education. And my, my answer is that we don't have uh, um, any uh, indicators in our funding uh, models uh, promoting uh, open science, but I agree that it's a, it's a strong uh, instrument if we wanted to promote it uh, more. But uh, we have policies, and uh, but as you have the op open science policy. We have an open access uh, policy in, in Denmark, but uh, no, yes. not yet. <laughs> okay. So, so, uh, do you want to still comment on this? Or? Well, uh, perhaps perhaps that might be useful to say that it's also really important to remember that when we are adding something to this model. It's, it's, it has to be really reliable and something that all universities and all the fields of education can use. So it, otherwise it would be just to do what different, different fields of, uh, fields of uh, uh, science or different universities. So that, that kind of issues also need to be taken in consideration. But, but uh, uh, for example, these open data sets are, some, uh, are something that needs to be thought in the future also. Yeah, of course. So let's thank Tommy again. And thank you.